I can't remember if this is a rerun or not, um, but I'm doing it anyway because I've been thinking about it, and that is the distinction between features and behavior in, in software in particularly, but it could be any kind of product development in general. And one of the things that I like to say is that you can define features in terms of behavior, but you can't define behavior in terms of features. Or at least it's incredibly awkward. It's like, you know, must have the behavior of having this feature or something like that. It's, it's, it's goofy. Whereas it's very simple uh, in terms of, of, of behavior. And I uh, came about this in terms of um, a technique that I use called behavior sheets where I go through um, something that I'm trying to get done and I just bash it out in an outliner where I have a sort of like system must do this, system must do that, must not, you know, must do X, must not do Y. And you just go and you build these up into a, into a structure. Now, this is the kind of thing where, uh, or at least the maturation of behavior sheets kind of came about in this, in this IBIS tool, where you can actually kind of see that there's sort of features and to the extent that a feature is a capability, this speaks to a capability, this is an issue. So like issues are just sort of things in the world that you want something done about. And in this case, this uh, map is uh, trying to uh, represent a, a set of, uh, of concerns. And so um, the red ones are the concerns themselves or the issues. The green ones are actionable or they're potentially actionable. They're not inherently actionable and this one in particular is. And then, then there are subsidiary issues like these guys. So these are also, you know, these are kind of feature-y, right? Like, but they're still sort of, they're, they are represented as like prescriptions and proscriptions about what the system needs to do. Or this is, these are particularly what the client wants to do. So client wants the ability to have create multiple IBIS networks, client wants to map IBIS issues to GitHub issues. Okay, like those are capabilities. Those are, for all intents and purposes, those are features. And so those are subsidiary. They are this thing. So this thing in the middle generalizes these two things. And I really need to make that light up again, but that's a low priority compared to all the other things that are very high priority anyway. So I can drill down, I, when I drill down into this, you can see, for instance, that here is a response to the, to the issue. And again, this is a, this is a, a marching order. This is something that, that, you can, that you can translate into an actionable thing. And it furthermore goes and it responds to this particular issue about creating multiple IBIS networks, which I'm in the work in the process of doing. And it has these subsidiary elements as well. And each one of these are in response to these other things. So when you go actually go back to this thing, this should have, yeah. So this generalizes, or rather this should be generalizing. What if, what was that again? What about? What about the ability to rename the network? So that should actually go there. Anyway. So you can see that the issues being raised are like concrete, like, well, what about this thing? And that's kind of the issue of behavior versus features. So we can see this is, you know, by all intents and purposes, this is a feature, which represents the thing in the middle here. Um, and this is an action item. This is actually something to do, the unit of work to actually do, which isn't always. When it's a position, it's not always a unit of work to do. It could just be a principle or something of that effect or a decision about something. But in this case, it actually is actionable. So here's, for example, like this, yeah, sure, that's a feature, you know, at least it's a capability. We could talk about it in, in a feature. But like 
say for example, uh, this is a pure behavior play. Now, uh, do we always want to focus the new network? Okay, so now what we're talking about is or showing, displaying here, uh, is actually the uh, issue network for the tool itself. And so what we're discussing here, as we're going down, so like we fill out these, uh, you know, we start with a, you know, we start with an issue, for example, let's we'll go back here. So this is an issue, it has a response, which is a position, the position is actionable, the position generalizes a bunch of other other determinations about what to do, decisions about what to do, which are also actionable. But you can see these sort of orange uh, elements here, for example, uh, in the graph. So they're questions, right? So we say, okay, do this, make some UI, etc. But we've got questions here. And maybe some of those questions are feature shaped. So like, what about the ability to rename a network? That's a very feature-shaped thing. But um, you know, how do we select the type of network to be created? What about the IBIS entity in context, et cetera, et cetera? These are questions of behavior. And the point is, is sure, you know, you've got this thing up here, which is a, you know, this is feature shape, but all this stuff down here, um, or rather at least most of it, is behavior. So you drill down into the into the weeds here. So the what this is showing is that the elements in the center are sort of these top level things, but then these are all the entailments. As we push out to the edges of the graph, all of the entailments uh, end up getting uh, sort of wrung out. And that is sort of the value uh, of behavior sheets in general, at least that's what I was trying to do. And with the IBIS tool, what I'm trying to do is incorporate the thing that I call the specificity gradient, where you have these sort of central concepts which are very accessible and then you as you push out to the edges and out into the weeds you know when you push out into the weeds you can see for example that this is very much in the weeds and all that stuff is clustered over in the corner when you push out into the weeds what you determine is how um, these are the sort of the more technical things and so the idea is 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 there's a sort of centrality uh, that ends up shaking out in this kind of a graph representation where the issues uh, that are germane to, to people like stakeholders, clients, etc., end up being near the top, which is the center in a, in a hyperbolic graph. And then the technical concerns end up uh, getting pushed out to the edges. I mean, and I'm working on the actual visualization of this, so you know, there's maybe some way of representing thresholds or something like that, so that you don't uh, scare off uh, stakeholders. That's kind of forthcoming. But the idea is that you can make an unbroken line that goes from something that the client wants to something that you have to do, which is sort of one of the challenges that I've always found with communicating. Uh, priorities of, uh, uh, of work to, to clients. Again, in my mind and you know in my experience, I've been doing this for something like 25 years now, uh, you can define features in terms of behavior, but it's really clunky to define behaviors in terms of features. Anyway, gonna finish my coffee.